Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from anthonymorganti.com and this is episode 10 of Learn Adobe Photoshop Elements and in this episode we're going to do a simple composite. I have this beach scene and in this tab I have a model in a bikini and we're going to take her out of this shot and put her in the beach scene so it looks like she's standing on the beach. And it's relatively easy to do, but before we do it, I just want to mention real quick, you know, in previous episodes, I give you guys the files I use to do these so you can practice at home. In this one, I'm not going to be able to. I'm not a model photographer, and I don't have, in my picture library, I don't have any pictures of pretty girls in bikinis. So I had to buy this shot from the stock photo site Dreams Time to do this um, episode. So because I bought it, I could do, you know, I could use it, but I can't give it away. It'd be stealing. I don't want to be stealing from the photographer. We're all photographers and we all have to stand up for each other's rights and help each other. So I'm not going to steal from another photographer. So I can't give this shot away. So hopefully you have a, a, someone who's willing to model and you could do a background and you could do a picture of the model and you could do this composite. If not, um, hopefully you could go out and take a background image and you could go over to a stock photo site like Dreams Time and just buy a picture. They're not very expensive. Um, and that way you're supporting the photographer and um, you could still do this uh, lesson. Okay, what we're going to do first is we're going to move this photograph onto the other photograph on top as a layer. So what we're going to do is click on uh, the uh, tab that contains her and we're going to click the move tool which is the first tool under the select part of the tools panel. And we're simply going to grab her and move her right on top of this shot anywhere just drop her down now you can see it's way bigger so we have to resize her so to do that I'm gonna zoom out a little bit I'm gonna hit command or control minus a few times to zoom out so I could see the entire outline of the size of the photograph that contains her and what I want to do is I want to drag these um, corner handles in to resize her so she'll fit in the scene. Now don't go just dragging them in because you could misproportion her if you drag them in unevenly so she'd become, you know, you know, distorted. We don't want to do that. So just go over one of the handles and just gently uh, click down on your left mouse button. That will change this bottom panel here to the um, transform panel and it will show us uh, some controls. Make sure that constrained proportions is checked. That's all you have to do. Now we could just um, happily drag that corner in knowing that we're not going to distort her um, image at all. So we're going to just, you know, resize her a little bit. Um, something about like that. All right, good. Now I'm just going to hit the checkbox and now we have her resized for the, um, the background. Now I'm going to hit Command-0 to bring it back up. You could hit Control-0 if you have a PC to bring it zoomed out uh, so we could see the photograph again. Now we want to get rid of the background that she's on, which is a white background. And one tip, if you're a photographer and you're photographing a model and you know you're going to be doing it for a composite, if you have a dark-haired model, photograph her on a black, uh, white background. Dark hair model, white background. Blonde hair, gray hair model, someone with light hair, photograph on a black background. It's easier to do the composite if you have a high contrast between the uh, hair color of the model and the background. So um, if you don't have a white or black background, you don't have any background, you can't afford two different backgrounds, get a gray background. Uh, gray background will work too as long as it's solid gray. Um, it's a little harder maybe to do the composite. Um, Sorry, I had to pause that video for a second because my son was walking in the house right when I was doing the video. Um, anyways, uh, the background. So dark-haired model, white background. Uh, Lighter-haired model, dark background. You could use a gray background, that's fine. All right, now what we want to do is select her from this background. So we're going to go over here to the um, tool panel under the select section. And we're going to click this icon which is the the last tool in that section and we're going to use the quick selection tool and it can, you know offers you up a brush there you can make the brush bigger with the, the right bracket key smaller with the left bracket key you've done that and what we're going to do is we're going to simply paint around the area where we want to select and you could see the marching ants will quickly jump to the edges of the shot 
and you can see just paint around and we we got the selection already it's really that fast now I want to zoom in and I want to examine the selection to make sure that it's a decent selection so I'm going to hit command or control plus a few times to zoom in um, once you're zoomed in you can move around move the photograph around by holding the space bar in, and it will turn it into a little hand the cursor into a little hand and you could um, move it around and make sure that we got you know her selected pretty well We're missing part of her right here so you could just you know refine it we're missing a lot of her hair but don't worry about that we're gonna um, refine that selection later to get a better selection on her hair so we're just gonna keep moving around and make sure that all the rest of her body is selected and it is alright did a nice job so we're gonna hit commander control zero to move back out now we want to refine the edge uh, particularly around the hair a little bit around here because there's kind of a little bit of a white glow over there so we're gonna hit refine edge in this uh, dialog box pops up. Now there's different view modes you could use. Now depending on your circumstances you will you could use different view modes. I don't always use just one. So in this case uh, the model on black looks very good because um, we had a white background so we could see where the white background C is bleeding through there. Remember I mentioned there's kind of white around this edge so we could see that it's re it's readily apparent um, if you know we had a blonde metal and a black background this wouldn't work at all so you go through and I usually just look at these I try each one the marching ants I'm not going to use that I actually I don't think I've ever used overlay on black I, as I mentioned I think works in this instance on white it's not going to work because we had the white background black and white I've never really used that um, on layers so this is her on the layer without the marching ants. This is her on her layer, on her background, I should say, um, without the marching ants. So I think on black works in this case. Now the next thing we do is smart radius. This is for edge detection. So we're going to click that. Just drag this to the right somewhere and it takes a second to render. Once it does, what I want you to do though is go up here to this box here, show radius. Click on that. And you could see that it it shows an outline of her and what it does it's it's the the thickness is part of it that's going out you're telling elements look this far outside of the current selection and the part that's going in you're telling elements look this far inside the current selection to try to refine the selection so in this case I could see it it's got a lot more of the hair up here and a lot more of the hair over here you don't want to go too far because you know it it could you know make your selection uh, worse too if you go a little too far so I just want to go far enough you know I so it's kinda just try it out you know it, it's not critical because we're gonna do something in a minute too that's gonna help further refine the selection so I'm gonna bring it to I don't know let's say around 22.4 pixels okay now I'm gonna click this box up here again to turn that off so we got her again so you can see we got rid of some of the white there we got rid of a lot of the white that was along the side of her body here we still have some white in the hair we're gonna get rid of that right now the way you do that is make sure this first tool is checked this is the refine radius tool this is where you actually paint on here to tell elements look look here this is where I want you to look so um, I've noticed like we have a lot of white here just don't go painting the whole thing real fast um, use little chunks I found it works a lot better if you just go slowly and do a little bit at a time see that see, I mean it's really magic actually at that there you know we got pretty much all her hair in and um, there's no more white around her arm here maybe a little bit right there and that's it I think that's pretty good um, so that's the um, refine radius tool so just you know use that like I said do it in little chunks now the next section is the adjust the edge um, you could see 
it's a little herky-jerky up in here. It's a little like choppy looking. So we use the smooth and feather tools for that. You don't want to do it too much because it will blur the edge and it will you know won't look as realistic. So you just want to bring it enough and to tell you the truth I rarely go over like 20 on the smooth. I, I go really low. I don't overuse these tools and I suggest you don't either. So bring it up a little see if it helps smooths it and it did. And the feather tool I really I really go over three on this. I mean that's how little I use the feather tool. See if you go way too far see how it puts this glow around her? So you really don't want to go you know you don't want to overdo it. So as I bring it up see I'm getting glow around her hair uh, even at 2.1 and I don't want that. So I'm gonna bring it down 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 and it's a little better. It's around 0.9. You could always go back and um, use your um, radius detection tool and try to repaint around where you think it's not working as good. And, you know, that's good. I think that's a nice selection right there. So the next part is these two um, sliders here, contrast and shift edge. I never use those. You could try them, see what they do. Those are kind of like leftover legacy controls of previous versions of Elements and previous versions of Photoshop where we didn't really have a refine edge dialog. And it was really hard to do selections. And you had to shift the edge and you had to adjust the contrast and do all these crazy things to get it to, um, to look better. Um, you really, you'll find most of the time you don't have to do with anything with those at all. Some people st still shift the edge a little bit. You could shift the edge in, shift the edge out, but I don't even mess with them. The next section is the output. Decontaminate colors we don't have to do on this shot. She was shot on a white background. If your model shot on a white background, black background, or gray background, solid, solid backgrounds, you don't have to decontaminate any colors. If it's in a busy background, you know, she's on a background with, you know, red and green and yellow and all these crazy colors behind her, uh, click decontaminate colors because the, some of the light will be reflecting off that background onto her and you don't want that light, that reflected light in the new shot. So decontaminate colors and move the slider until you get, um, you know, get the colors off of her is what I guess the easiest way to say. The last part we're concerned with is the output too. Nine times out of ten, ninety time, ninety percent of the time, I use no layer or new layer with layer mask. Um, that gives me the most flexibility down the line to do other things. Um, you, there's all different things. You could do a layer mask, just a new layer, a new document, but I'm going to choose in this instance new layer with layer mask. Um, when if you're unsure what to use, always use new layer with layer mask. That'll work. If um, you have time, experiment with all the different ones and see what you get. Okay, and I'm going to click OK. Now it's going to take a second to render, but it's going to put her on top of the layer stack. It's going to be the original shot we just dragged over, but it's going to have a mask that's masking out the background that was around her. Now you can see the original one we dragged over has a line through the eyeball. That means it's not being, it's not being utilized anymore. It doesn't have to be there. So we're going to toss that right out. So we just have her and the beach. Now it's there, I mean, you know, but it's not a great composite. It looks fake. The main reasons why composites look fake is the lighting and a couple things. The beach behind her is brighter, a little brighter than she is. So I want to bring, the first thing I want to do is bring the intensity of the light down on the beach, but leave it the same on her. Secondly, the lighting on the beach is more straight on. It's like just slightly to the photographer's left. And the lighting on her is considerably more to the photographer's left. She's being lit more from the left than the um, beach is. So that's a tip too. If you're photographing both a background and a model and you're going to do a composite later, make sure that the lighting matches. So if you're doing an outdoor uh, shot, try to do that first so you know how the light the sun was in the shot and try to match your studio lights to match that lighting. It'll save you a lot of work when you do the composite. If you're doing one or the other, try to match them up. Like when I went to Dreams Time to buy this, I was trying to look for lighting that was as close as possible um, to my background. But I didn't want it too close because I want to show you, th you know, tricks you could do to try to help it to look better. So as I mentioned, 
um, the lighting is the problem and the first part of the lighting I mentioned is the background is a little too bright so I want to click on the background here and I want to duplicate it I'm gonna hit command or control J to duplicate the background <clears throat> Next I want to do is I want to make the background darker. So I'm going to go to Enhance and I'm going to Adjust Lighting and I'm going to go to Brightness Contrast and we got this dialog box popping up and we're just going to pull brightness down. Now you could see it's only doing the background because I'm clicked on that background. So we're just going to bring, <coughs> excuse me, I'm sorry, losing my voice a little bit. I'm going to bring the background down just a little bit to better match the intensity of the light that is on her. All right, so that we got that done. Now the next thing we want to do is I want to change the lighting on her a little bit so it matches more of the way the light was on the background, the sun was on the background. So what we're going to do is we're going to do some dodging and burning. And it's real easy to do. <clears throat> So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new layer, which is right up here at the top. That's the piece of paper with the corner folded over. Create a new layer. We're going to fill that layer with gray. So we're going to go to Edit, Fill Layer, 50% Gray, and just click OK. Now it you know, obscures our uh, layers now, but we're going to change the blend mode to overlay. So what that, it's as though it's not even there when it's an overlay bl blend mode. It's almost like it's transparent, but that's because it's 50% gray. If it was black, everything would be darker. We'd still see it. If it was white, everything would be white. We'd still see it. We did that in the previous episode, um, if you remember. Now, in this case, because it's gray, it's neutral, so we're not seeing um, you know, any effect. But if I would paint on this a little light, like white or a little black, then it would actually darken and lighten the picture and that's how we're going to dodge and burn her so she looks like she fits in this scene. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over to the dodge and burn tools which are under the enhance section of your tool panel. We're going to click on that and I want to dodge first so I'm going to click on the dodge tool down here and that's the thing that looks like the um, magnifying glass or lollipop. And the next thing we're worried about is exposure. Um, we don't want to be too high for instance, if I was at 50% exposure and I paint across her once, then I paint across her a second time, then we exposed her 100%. So what we want to do is we want a very low exposure and we want to build it up. So we, the more we paint across her, the more we're enhancing the effect. So I'm going to use an exposure of 10%. And to do that, I just have to hit the one, the number one, key on my keyboard. If I hit 2, 20%, 3, see, that's how you could do it real quick. So I'm going to hit the 1 key on my keyboard to get 10%. Then I'm going to make sure I'm clicked on that gray layer and I'm just going to paint right on that layer to try to brighten up her, the front of her body a little bit. So make it look like the sun is shining almost straight on her. Okay, just kind of like that. Now, one thing I want to add, what if I paint it over here on the background? You can see how I'm making the background lighter? Well, I don't want that. I just want to paint on her. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clip this layer to this layer. Remember we did clipping masks before? Well, you could clip layers too. We're just going to hover between the two um, layers. We're going to hold the Alter Option key in. And you can see how it turns the cursor into that double circle with the arrow on it. Just click on that, and now that is clipped to her. And you can see that dodging I did over here. I'm dodging now, but you can't see it. See how the mask is dodged, or I should say the layer is dodged? Um, it's not showing through because it's clipped to her. Okay, so um, one quick note is when I do dodging and burning, and I suggest you do, do, do it like... Uh, really take care and take your time doing it. I'm doing a really quick job here and it looks pretty bad. When I do dodging and burning I'll do it over an hour until I get it just right. So this is more in a, to show you you know how to do it. So I dodged the front of her body to make it look like the sun is coming a little more from the front. Um, I'm going to do her arm over here too. And you can see I could leave the brush big because I'm 
got that clipped to her. I don't have to worry about it affecting the background at all. So I'm going to dodge that arm there and this arm there a little bit. Make that a little brighter. Now we're going to burn. Uh, before I burn though, what we should do is good um, you know, practice uh, in when you're working with Photoshop elements is to name the layers. Um, just click on it. Uh, you know, it's, it's fussy. Click on it a couple times and you could rename it. I'm going to rename this Dodge. And um, the reason being is you're going to have instances where you're going to have 30 or 40 or 50 layers here. And it's going to get confusing of what you did where if everything says layer 1, layer 2, layer 3. So name your layers. This is our Dodge layer. Okay. We're going to get a new layer. This is going to be our burn layer. I'm going to click there and we're going to call that burn. And I'm going to clip it right away. So I'm going to hold the Alter Option key down. And I clipped it to her. I'm going to hit Edit, Fill Layer, 50% Gray, click OK. And I'm going to change the Blending Mode to Overlay. I'm going to go down here and I'm going to get the Burn Tool. The Burn Tool is like the hand that's making like an O look. And what we're going to do is wherever you think the shadow might fall, um, you know, with the way you're trying to make the illusion of the, the, the sun coming. So the sun's coming more in the front, so we're going to get some shadows over here. So make sure your exposure's low, 10%. And because we're clipped, we don't have to worry about sp uh, spilling onto the background. So I'm just going to do this, you know, just to show you. So I'm painting on this layer, and we're just making some shadows. And that's all you really have to do um, for that. So I'm going to end it there as far as the burning is concerned because, you know, for the sake of time. But you get the idea now how to dodge and burn. Now the last thing I want to mention is a lot of times with composite, what gives them away is the person's feet on the ground. That's why I purposely chose a composite of a, a photograph that didn't include the model's feet. And you'll notice if you look at movie posters, because there are almost always composites, you'll see something will always be obscuring the foot the feet of any people in the composite. Either they won't show them at all, or if they do show them, they'll have, you know, like some dark line going through it, or they'll have fog or something obscuring the feet. And um, on this one here, it looks a little funky down here. So we're going to obscure down here. And the easiest way to do that is to put a vignette on it. And to put a vignette on it in Elements is a multi-stop process, but it's not that hard. What we're going to do is we're going to merge all these layers. Now you could flatten the image, but I don't want to do that. I'm just going to merge it and have it sitting on top of the layer, um, layer stack. And it's kind of a multi-key um, function to do. Okay, the key sequence to have this merge layer on top is shift alt or option command or control e as in edward so that created the layer up there so now if you have a mac it's shift option command e if you have a pc it's shift alt control e you might want to make a note of that all right so that merged all these layers and put it on top. Okay. Now, the next thing we want to do is we want to make a selection. So go to the Select panel of your Tools panel and click the Rectangle box. And just, you know, make a rectangle on your model like that. All right. Now we have a selection. Now I want to invert the selection because I really want to select the outside, not the inside. So hit Shift, Command or Control I, and that inverted the selection. Now you can see I have two sets of marching ants. Okay, now I want to feather the selection. So we're going to go to Select, Feather, and the maximum you could use with elements is 250 pixels. So use the maximum and click OK. All right. Now we have that selection uh, feathered. Now we want to duplicate it. All you got to do is hit Command or Control J. And you can see the selection up here. I'm going to hold the Alt key in when I click on that eyeball. And you can see it has the selection feathered all by itself on top. Now I'm going to hit Alt 
or option. I, th I think I said Alt or Command before. It's Alt or Option. Option if you have a Mac, Alt if you have a PC, click on the eyeball. And you could turn that eyeball exclusively on or exclusively or, you know, the whole thing on. All right. So now we have that sitting there. All we have to do is change the blend mode to multiply. And you could see it gave us a vignette around um, our image. And it kind of obscured down here where it was looking funky. So that's a little tip to do a vignette. And so in this episode's done, I showed you how to do a selection, how to move it on top, you know, how to uh, refine your selection, how to dodge and burn, and finally how to do a vignette. And um, again, I'm sorry I can't give you the files I used in this program, um, but if you have any questions, email me at Tony at AnthonyMorganti.com. I'll do my best to answer your questions. And I do appreciate everyone watching. And if you have a chance, go over to YouTube and subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'd really appreciate that. So that's it for Episode 10. I'll talk to you guys soon.